So if you've been paying attention to the Shopify blog, you've noticed there's been a little bit of a snafu between MailChimp and Shopify. Now, each company has its own interpretation of what's happened and why they've done what they've done. I'm gonna link the two blog posts that they both posted down below in the description. But for the point of this video is, I honestly don't really care what Shopify and MailChimp have against each other and why they're not willing to work together on solving this issue. What I care about is whether my online store is going to continue working after the MailChimp app is pulled from the Shopify store. So what I'm going to show you in this video is how to prepare your store for when that eventually happens. We're going to get you completely moved off of the shop of, or off of the MailChimp native app inside of Shopify so that when they pull down that app, you are no longer in a position where you're not getting your, your systems continue to work. So I'm going to show you three different ways to do this. The first way is going to be to use Zapier, which if you've watched this channel, you know that I'm a big fan of Zapier. It allows you to automate a bunch of things and it is absolutely worth the price of admission for this app. That's the first way we're going to do it. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to go through and I'm going to show you a third party app that is available in the app store, which you would be able to download and then be able to, um, connect the two pieces together just like you would before with the native app. The only difference is it won't have the little MailChimp logo on there. And then the third option, if you have gotten to a point where you're like, that's it, I am done with dealing with this drama, I wanna to go to another company to do my email marketing, then that is fine too, and I'm gonna give you guys some suggestions. So stick around to the end of the video so that you can see which, uh, which companies we suggest that you use for doing your email marketing. All right, so let's jump into my screen here and I'm gonna show you how to set this up on Zapier. So after you've set up a Zapier account, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to go to Zaps and you wanna make a Zap. All right, so I'm gonna name my Zap um, because this allows me to go and come back from it or go to it and come back from it and not lose track of where it is. So I'm gonna go MailChimp integration for Shopify is gonna be the name of the zap. And I'm gonna go YouTube tutorial just because I have a number of zaps on there and I don't want to get confused on which one is the real one and which is the one I'm showing you guys. So the first thing we need to do is we need to set up a trigger. Now a trigger inside a Zapier is when an action happens. I'm gonna select Shopify as a trigger because that's what we're trying to do. Then we need to select a condition. So I'm gonna select a new customer. New customer, um, is now created and we want to go and choose a store where this action happens inside. I'm going to check my demo store and then we are going to go and test it. It's going to bring back some samples so that we know that we're working with the correct data. So I'm going to just choose customer A and I'm going to continue. Now that we've set up a trigger, now the next thing we need to do is we need to add a filter. Normally what you could do is you can go and add an action but we want to make sure that we're at, we are following all of the spam protection laws that are in place so that people aren't being added to lists without their consent. So the first thing we want to do is we want to add a filter. And the filter basically allows us to filter customers based on what they selected during checkout. All right, so we need to set up a filter. So we're going to go to filter and we're going to select only continue if. Once that's selected, we want to select under the drop down menu accepts marketing. So if we scroll down here, we'll see accepts marketing. In gray, it's going to show you what that specific person that you pulled in from the demos has selected. So in this case, they selected false. I can go back and I can do another test with another customer who has selected true in order to make sure that it connects where we want to. We're gonna hit the drop down list and then we're gonna go down to the bottom because we want to select a Boolean. We don't want to select if text contains. So we wanna select the Boolean feature and we only want to continue to add them to our shop of, or to our MailChimp list if it is true. So we're gonna select that as true and then we're gonna hit test and continue. Now it's gonna come back and it's gonna tell us the zap would not have continued. And that's coming back to what I had mentioned before is under the sample data that we pulled in, that current customer accepts marketing equals false. So you wanna make sure that when you're testing these out that you double check your sample data in order to make sure that it has the right information. I know for the sake of this demo that I have customers in there that have selected it as true. But for the point of this demo, we're gonna continue on because now we know the filter is set up. After the person has passed the filter, we now need to do an action. So under action, we're gonna select MailChimp and we're gonna update or add a subscriber. We're gonna to need to choose an account, which we've already done. And we're gonna now need to set up the template. 
the first thing you need to do is you need to pick a list for them to go into. So I'm gonna go and put them into testing group. And then I need to click on the right hand side here and I wanna select a dynamic field from the Shopify uh, input. Now it's important to select new customer and then select their email address, which will be the one right at the top. Now, the next option that comes up here is the double opt-in. Double opt-in will send them an email asking them to confirm that they wanna be added to the mailing list. Now, it, because we set up the filter, we don't have to have them confirm because they're gonna confirm on the Shopify checkout, and this will give the customer a better user experience. So as they're checking through, they can select the, the button that says, yes, I wanna accept marketing, and then they're no longer required to double opt-in. Okay, next thing, we wanna update existing. So if they're an existing customer and they're buying more things and they've changed their uh, information, we wanna hit yes. The final thing is, is you can add them to a group. Groups are a new feature inside of MailChimp. Uh, I'll be honest with you, I haven't had a chance to really dive into what groups can do. So I'm going to just skip over these for now and I'm gonna hit continue. All right, now that we have got our Zap set up, we can send a test to MailChimp and we can see that the test has successfully added that user to our MailChimp account. We can finish that off and then we can turn it on. Now when someone goes and purchases, it's going to go and send that email directly to our MailChimp account. All right, now that we've covered the MailChimp integration, let's talk about how to set it up with an app. So if we hop over to the Shopify app store, there's an app called ShopSync. Now ShopSync will connect your store with MailChimp. It's a super simple app. You simply click on the app, you put in your shop URL. So let me put in our demo store here. Once you've authorized your account, you will come up here and it'll ask you to install ShopSync. You hit install app and it will let you connect the integrations. Now there is some installation ins instructions. You need to get a MailChimp account, which we already have. Uh, you need to connect to MailChimp, so we're gonna go and hit the connect button. It's going to pop up a dialog box, which we are gonna then be able to log into. Then we're gonna select our list. So we're gonna select the same list, testing group. We can decide our double opt-in options. We can merge tags if we want to, and then we can hit start sync. Now what this is going to do is it's going to take all of our um, users that are inside Shopify, and then it's going to sync them with our, um, our MailChimp account. Finally, as I had mentioned earlier in the video, we have an, a third and final option, which is going to a different email marketing company. So we recommend two email marketing companies, depending on the size of your business. If you are looking to do, if you are a Shopify Plus customer, I highly suggest you look check out uh, Dot Mailer. Dot Mailer has got a lot of AI tools and has got a really slick interface for you to be able to set up your custom zones and custom sections for sending out email notifications notifications. The other one for the lower end type of thing is Clavio. So I've also left a link down below for both of those two items. So be sure to go and check those out. Well, that's it for me today. I hope that this was helpful. I hope that this was able to get you through all of the woes of companies that decide that they don't want to work together anymore. As always, you can leave a comment down below if you have any questions, if I missed anything. Um, if you like this video, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I do make videos every Thursday. If you need any help, additional help with doing this integration, or maybe you have something else that you need some help with, be sure to check out my website, sunbowl.ca, because we can help. There is where we go and help merchants find true success with their online store. That's it for me today. Hope you guys had a good one. We'll see you in the next one.